Hey what is up guys and welcome to yet another 3D pilot video. It's already quite late in the evening and I'm using my LED panel to light me and I'm in my room it's a little messy over here so I hope you don't mind too much. Today I wanted to show you how you make a turntable animation of a model that you made in SOLIDWORKS using Blender and the EV rendering engine. So the method that I'll be showing you uh, involves importing the model into Blender, setting up materials uh, and getting that to render an EV, which is a new feature in Blender. It isn't really fully developed yet, but you can already use that. But we're looking forward to the official release later this year, but we can use it already to make animations like that one. You can use this technique on basically any SOLIDWORKS model that you've got. The only real limitation that you've got is about materials. You can't really do uh, transparent materials that well, but if you've got just some metal, some plastics, or even some texture things you can follow along with the material series that I've got links in the description um, to find out more about how making how you make materials in Blender but if you haven't got too much transparent stuff you can just get right to it we're going to be working on a PS3 controller it's a nice model that I've got off GrabCat and it was made by a student called Rianul I'm hoping again to pronounce that correctly I'm not sure uh, but whatever let's get right to it so here's the model that we're going to be working on I got this off GrabCat and uh, it's just a basic PS3 controller um, type of model. You can do this basically with any model that you've got uh, within SOLIDWORKS. Now I didn't do any materials, that's not needed as we're going to do that in Blender. The very first thing we're going to do is export the model as a mesh using an SDL file. I used the uh, find settings. Now you can see how you do that in one of my last videos, the links are in the description. I import the SDL into Blender, scaled it up uh, until it's workable and have a look at the shading. I'm using smooth shading with the auto smooth setting enabled. Next, I go into edit mode and start selecting different parts of the mesh that should have different materials. Uh, I used about 10 materials for this model. It depends on what kind of model you have, of course. But in this case, I have the main body, the joysticks and a couple of buttons. Now, it's important to note that I am assigning the materials and giving the materials a name. Um, but I'm not actually making the materials. I'm going to do this in real time in the EV engine. So don't waste your time on making the materials right here. You can also split up your model into different parts, but I found that assigning different materials to different parts of the mesh within one model uh, works a lot smoother, especially if we go to the EV rendering engine. And that way I just kept on selecting and assigning different materials to different parts. Don't forget to do the tops of the buttons as well, uh, that got a little color on them. You can also give those a different material and just easily make them a different color without having to use any textures. When that's all done, I save out my blend file and then open up the new version of Blender that's got EV in it. You can find links in the description on where to find this. Now this engine is not quite stable, so I don't recommend it to use it on big modeling projects, but you can use it for visualizations like this one. For a quick and easy lighting, I'm using an HDR that I found on the internet uh, that looks like a lighting studio, and that enables me to have a good look at the materials and add the reflections uh, when making the materials. So for making the materials, I just select the material that I had already assigned uh, in the previous version of Blender, well the current version of Blender, and simply used a principal shader for the material. If you want to know how that works, just check the links in the description. I just made a series on making materials, uh, both in the Cycles rendering engine and real time. And I'm not using any textures except for some noise textures, uh, some procedural noise to get a little bump on the joysticks and on the little soft touch buttons. All of the buttons are basically a combination of a base color and a certain roughness and, like I said, sometimes a noise texture for the bump. Metalness was always set to zero as all of the parts are plastic except for a little USB port at the top. I just made that one material, one metal material, but you won't be seeing that very well in the animation anyway, so I don't put too much time in that. So it just took a couple of minutes and made all of the materials look the way I wanted them to. Next up was defining how our model would look rendered. So I decided to add a little bit of ambient occlusion. This will help get the model um, pop out a little bit more and also use a little bit of bloom, which is a kind of, of shiny glow that you've got around really bright objects. Uh, it shows up only a little bit when the lights are directly reflecting in the plastic and they kind of blind the camera. So you can just enable those in the EV render settings. Here you can see what ambient occlusion does. It casts a kind of uh, all-around shadow on your model. There's not really a cut of direction, but darker parts like cavities in your model uh, are made a little bit darker. And here you can see the effect of the bloom. I wanted the background of my animation to be pretty much black. So I just added a simple uh, circular floor that I decided to extrude upwards for having a fully black uh, background. 
I gave the floor a material, again the principal shader, uh, with a black base color and a very high roughness. Now I like the HDR for lighting for the reflections and, and the basic lighting, but I decided to add a couple of point lamps that would help cast some shadows and also get the bloom effect to appear a little bit more. It's always nice to have a bit of color in your lights as well, not just have them perfectly white. And I also played around with the strength of the lamp, the size of the lamp and the softness of the shadows as well. I like the way that looked, so I put another point lamp at the back of the model, help light the back of the model. And I gave that one a little bit of color as well. I made that one a little bit orange. After that I messed around with the bloom a little bit more. You can add some color to that, add some different, uh, some different effects. It's just fun to have a little play around with. And then as I said, I extruded the floor upwards to have a sort of ball shape that contains my model and all the lights. I filled to the edges and made sure that the smoothing was set to smooth and not flat shading. Next up is setting up the turntable animation. Now this is very easy. First thing you do is you add an empty. An empty is just a plain uh, set of axes. I made that a little bit larger so you can see that clear. And then I made a camera that points towards the controller and that is parented to the empty, which is just a, the plain axes. Then I set up the animation, which is exactly 359 frames long, in which time the camera rotates around the object um, 360 degrees, which makes that the animation has exactly one render, one frame, every degree of turntable rotation. I gave the MT two keyframes, one at the start, one at the end, um, with a Z rotation of 0 first and 359 at the end of the animation. Also, I made sure to have the rotation to be constant and not speed up or slow down uh, during the animation. So for this, you make sure that the Z rotation uh, on the graph editor is set to linear interpolation. It might sound a little bit complicated, I assure you it's not, but you can check out links in the description to have a look at another video that explains the concept a little bit better. I made sure that the clipping of the camera uh, goes from close enough to far enough, so that means that objects that are a little bit further of the camera are still rendered out and had a look at what kind of framing that I would like. I decided to render out the render in a square format, as I will be uploading this to Facebook, and I think that looks quite nice in the Facebook timeline and a nice square video. And I made the resolution high enough, in this case 1080 by 1080 pixels, so when you watch this video on a full HD screen, you still get pixel perfect details. Now is also a good time to go about the gloss effect, uh, the bloom effect, the ambient occlusion, the lights, uh, and have a good look, a good honest look on your render and see how, how it would look before you go to rendering, because rendering will take a little bit of time, uh, it won't take ages, absolutely not, but it's, it's now that you should be thinking about, for example, the roughness of the shadow and um, all that kind of details. But the animation looks great, um, so next thing is to set up the render settings. I'm rendering this straight to an MP4 video, I don't really recommend that. Uh, normally you should render out every single frame uh, as an image and then compile those later into a video. But since I'm pretty sure this won't crash on me because it's a really simple animation, I just rendered this out straight to MP4. You can see me messing around with the resolution a little bit more and the animation style, but I didn't really change anything. I made some pre-renders to have a look at uh, if the anti-aliasing is correct, but everything looked fine basically. The rendering of this animation took 15 minutes in total. Uh, for all of the frames, so that's not one frame, that's for all of the frames. So I said this is real time, it's still a real-time real engine, but since I've got quite a high resolution, I've got the bloom effects, the ambient occlusion going on, and a couple of different materials, the rendering took, well, the 15 minutes. If you're looking at ray tracers, however, for example, if you wanted to make this animation using Cycles or SolidWorks Visualize, you would be looking at something like 10 minutes for each and every frame. So that would take hours and hours of rendering time, and that's not really needed. Real-time engines do a great job, especially if you've only got some metals and some plastics. When you go to uh, animations or uh, have materials that are glasses or plastics that are translucent, for example, then you can run into some problems with, with um, realism. But I think for this kind of animation, a real-time engine, just like Eevee or maybe Unreal Engine, if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, does just fine. And now you can use all that time that you would have spent in rendering, in changing your scene, making different animations, trying out some different materials, and, and have a lot more output. So yeah, that's basically why we did this real-time rendering. When everything is set and done, you end up with a loopable animation just like this one.
So the whole process of making that turntable animation took about 40 minutes uh, and that involves everything from exporting it, getting the animation set up, making the materials, the lighting, everything. And of course the rendering as well, which took about 15 minutes, uh, which is not too short, but as you know, uh, taking a still render with a ray tracer often takes something like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on the resolution, depending on the quality and the materials. So I think 40 minutes for making an animation like this is not bad, especially if you're kind in that you can easily swap this out with other models, make different iterations. This is just a really basic basic thing you can do with that. I didn't go in too specific, I didn't want to spend too much time on that, but if you want to know uh, a little bit better what to do, again check the links or send me a question. You can always uh, send me your blend file, post a screenshot, send me a screenshot of uh, whatever problem you're dealing with and we can have a look at it together. So yeah, that's basically it for this video. I want to thank you a lot for watching. We're almost at 150 subscribers, so thanks a lot for that. And yeah, I'll see you next week with yet another tutorial. Thanks a lot for the support and see you later. Bye!